I'm doing well. Nice to have you back with us again. Thank you, Thank you for having me. Yeah, if you could move over just a little bit more. Ready. <laughs> just drop this down. Nice speech. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. And, it, and it's nice to see, from my standpoint, that among all of the political class, those people who are serving or who have already served, you're consistently now in the top of the polls. Yeah. The non-political yeah. non class, unfortunately, right. above. But you're doing well. Thank you. I cannot wait, if those other folks kind of stumble, yeah. that the establishment Republicans have to go, Oh, drat, we got to support Ted Cruz against Hillary? <laughs> <laughs> Do you see that coming, maybe? Uh, you know, I'm very encouraged by what we're saying. Because what we're saying is conservatives uniting. And if you look at the primary, conservatives outnumber moderates about two to one in, in the Republican primary. If we stand together, we'll win the primary. And, and people are fed up with Washington. The reason why you're seeing Donald Trump get a lot of attention is they're looking for someone who'll stand up to Washington. And, and at the end of the day, I think there will be a natural arc to Mr. Trump's candidacy. I like Donald Trump. I'm glad he's in the race. I don't believe he's going to be the nominee. I think at the end of the day, Republican primary voters are going to ask, who in the field has a demonstrated record of actually standing up to Washington, of taking on the Washington cartel, of taking on both Democrats and members of their own party, and fighting for the Constitution and liberty? And I think my record of doing that is markedly different from the other candidates in this race. I think that's why we're seeing this kind of grassroots enthusiasm and excitement. I mean, this is a good-sized crowd. Steve, question for the senator. The, uh, you talked about the Iran Treaty. Um, yep. Another treaty that's popular these days is the U.N. Arms Treaty. Yes. And uh, so could you speak to that, please? Uh, I think the U.N.'s Arms Treaty is a terrible treaty under no circumstances should we ratify it. If I'm elected president, I will unsign the U.N. Small Arms Treaty. It's one of the things the president tries to give away our sovereignty, to undermine our Second Amendment. You know, I've been proud to lead the effort in the Senate defending our Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. And when it comes to guns and individual liberty, for two decades I've been on the front lines leading the fight to defend our Second Amendment. And as president, I'll continue that fight. What's your sense um, in the Senate about how they're going to respond to this? Uh, there are not the votes to ratify the Small Arms Treaty. We, we had a vote... Uh, a little over a year ago in the Harry Reid Senate, and we had the votes to vote it down now. I think that is one of the areas where with a Republican Senate, there are, there are nowhere close to the votes to ratify it. I don't think the Obama administration will even try to have it go up for a vote, because thankfully we have the votes to, to defeat it. But we should remove the executive signature from it as well. When we last talked, we talked about the administrative state and the Constitution. It was a great uh, half hour with you yes. as you were um, waiting for your next plane. Tonight you talked about what I call the Dan Pfeiffer executive order right. to eliminate all of the, yes. those uh, illegal orders that he has given. And you've talked slowly about ratcheting back each of the uh, regulatory state. Yes. Would you issue an executive order that says all regulations sponsored under the last administration are now to be withdrawn, withheld, and gotten rid of? And would you institute legislation to override the 1946 Administrative Rule Act, which allows yeah. these administrative groups to make their own law, to make right. their own fines, and to make them uh, legislative, judiciary, and executive all at once. Well, as you know, there, there are different species of, of regulations and right. orders. When it comes to an executive order, any one of those can be rescinded with a stroke of a pen, and that, that is clear and unambiguous. No one disputes that. With respect to regulations, I think what we need is a serious, concerted legal strategy from the White House to take on the regulatory state. Listen, there are decades of court precedents protecting regulation, so it needs to be done, I believe, in a serious, carefully thought out way. I, I suspect courts would not enforce a blanket effort at undoing every regulation that went through the regulatory process. I think it would be far more effective to pick a handful of key targets that have the greatest negative impacts on the American people, the greatest negative impacts on jobs, and use them as a test case, as a vehicle for ratcheting down the regulatory state. And I think that needs to be a serious, sophisticated strategy. As you know, before I was in the Senate, I was a U.S. Supreme Court litigator. So I have spent over a decade 
defending the Constitution, fighting for free market principles. And so I want to do this in a way that actually succeeds in taking down these regulations. And, and I think that needs to be the, the process of some fairly careful and extensive strategy to, to, to lay it out the right way. Uh, you went through your first couple of days in office. Um, I didn't hear you say we ditched the czars. Are you going to ditch the czars? <laughs> Well, the first thing I said I'd do is rescind every illegal well, and unconstitutional true. executive that's action, yep. and, and the czars are one of the manifestations of that. Um, look, you can have staffers in the White House who are responsible for a policy area and coordinate with the cabinet, but the idea, the reason the czars are proliferated in this administration is this administration is an imperial administration. You know, I'm reminded of Jonathan Turley, who is a Democratic constitutional law professor. He's a liberal. He voted for Barack Obama in 08. Professor Charlie has publicly said President Obama is the embodiment of the imperial presidency. Barack Obama has become the president Richard Nixon always wished he could be. And the czars are one of the manifestations of that. It is this high-minded, imperious approach to law rather than following the Constitution. And that will change if I'm elected president. What else do you see in the executive that you think people need to understand that needs to change that you didn't talk about? Well, look, you, you can go literally agency by agency and reduce the burden of government on the people and protect our constitutional rights. We've seen an ethos for six and a half years where the Bill of Rights, you're in my liberties, the federal government views them as a threat and it comes after them. I believe the federal government ought to be in the posture of defending our liberties, of standing up for free speech, for religious liberty, for the right to keep and bear arms. Instead of going after us, standing for us. And that is going to be an across-the-board commitment in my administration, if I'm elected, that we will defend the Constitution, that every cabinet department will defend the Constitution, and we will be bound by it as the law of the land. I know that there are a lot of people here who want to talk to you. So, Senator Cruz, I want to say thank you very much for taking just a few minutes yeah. with Granite Rock again, and hopefully we'll see you at a further event soon enough. Mike, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure. And to your listeners, I would encourage you, as I always do, go to our website, tedcruz.org, tedcruz.org. Sign up online, contribute online. We're building a grassroots army across the state of New Hampshire and across the country. It's tedcruz.org. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you very Thanks, much, Senator. sir. Have fun. <laughs> Absolutely. We're having a blast. Good. Good to hear. All right, folks, that is it pretty much for, for us for us at the end of the day because it, it is getting late. The lights are coming on. The cameras aren't going to be able to see very much, Steve. But, uh, no, I want to say thanks to all the Groxers for coming out. Almost everybody showed up. It was a good event. The only problem is I wish he had been over there, you know, kind of <laughs> further over there a little bit more instead of right in front of us because we get the back of his head. But I, I loved your quip. People will be able to say that we've got Ted Cruz's back. Yeah, I did say that. <laughs> so, <laughs> any, any, an any, any closing remarks, Steve? Uh, nope, I'm good. The gentleman has a question. Uh, yes. Uh, what's your question? Oh, okay. All right, folks, that'll be it for us here this Sunday night in Hollis at Broxter Mike's house with Ted Cruz. We'll be back on Saturday at our next uh, Granite Rocks uh, edition of Grok Talk, a production of GraniteRock.com, New Hampshire's leading conservative liber libertarian website, and the Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers. Have a good rest of your evening and a great week. Rock TV.